today we're going to be learning about the design. I'm oh, sorry. Today we're going to be learning about the design and manufacturing choices around medical parts, just like this here at Galway Tool and Mold. Welcome to Swarf and Ships. Now, what is a medical part? There's a few behind me right here. There's inhalers, masks, uh, parts for EpiPens. But what do they need to be? What requirements do they all have in common? Well, they need to be safe, they need to be effective, and they need to be cheap because you need to be able to buy these for a reasonable price and not have to spend the, spend the earth on an inhaler, for example. Um, and in order to be safe, these parts obviously don't want to damage you in any way. So these materials need to be tough but not brittle. I mean, you imagine if an inhaler is jangling around in your pocket with your keys and your coins, then um, it can't be uh, brittle and, and cracking all the time. It needs to be safe. Um, and also to be effective, material choice is a very important matter. So on this mask, you need a slightly softer material here to create a good seal around your face. So we've learned a little bit about what medical parts are now. Let's move on a little bit and find out about the design choices and also how they're made. The process that hits all of that criteria is called plastic injection molding. It's done by the machine just like the ones behind me. Um, this machine will inject plastic that starts off in granule form, just like these granules here. It will heat the plastic up to 200 degrees C, maybe 200 to 300 degrees C. And as it becomes a liquid, it's then injected into a mold, which is pressed together. Uh, and the plastic is injected at 1,200 bar. The mold is held together with 150 tons. That's almost 50 African elephants. Can you imagine trying to fit that many African elephants in here pressing against this mold? I couldn't either. Um, and these part cycles generally are about five seconds, five to 15 seconds. So the mold closes, injects the, the component, the part cools down, it, the mold separates, the part gets ejected every five seconds or five to 15, depending on the size of the mold. Um, with the EpiPen uh, mold, that's 16 impressions, so it makes 16 parts every cycle. And that can be between 75 parts a minute or even 4,500 parts an hour. And these molds run 24 hours a day. That's why it takes so much design engineering work to keep them running and make as many parts as possible because they cost a lot of money to make. I've been dragged to this part of the machine shop. I don't know why. Oh, it's because it says manufacturing. That's why. We've not seen the machines yet that make all these molds, but you're about to find out. And here we are in the machine shop. We've got uh, quite a few Rotors machines here that do lots of different jobs. But before we talk about the different jobs they do, we need to talk about the, the mechanical layout of a mold tool. So this is what's called a bolster or an outer. And this basically holds kind of all the business parts, all those inserts that have all the forms that make the uh, plastic components. It also has holes that need to be very accurate in terms of diameter and also an XY tolerancing that hold the alignment pins that keep those two mold halves uh, aligned to make sure you don't get those mismatches on the components. There's also different parts like the inserts, there's ejector plates, there's loads of different parts in the stack up of those mold parts. Now, all these different uh, machines here have lots of different jobs. Now, the Doosan behind me, big horizontal machine tool, twin pallet, um, has got some great work holding here that means you can set up a base plate, uh, a bolster on this side of the tombstone and a bolster base plate on the other side of the tombstone, as well as putting some inserts in here, all for roughing. Now, this is a real workhorse of a machine that can rough all those base plates and all those inserts before they go for finished machining on either the Rotors machine here. This is one of the newest machines here at Galway Tool and Mold. This basically, before the bolsters um, are finished machined, they are roughed on the deuce and they're stress relieved for a couple of days. They're surface ground on both sides. And then they're held down in this mag base here, which holds them perfectly, holds them perfectly flat. Um, they kind of plonk them down and then we'll just probe them up to set the coordinate system because they don't need to be set uh, flat to the axis of the machine. But Daniel here is setting uh, the, the parts up, and he's also just done a finish pass on a lot of these alignment holes. And those tolerances are between 20 and 30 micron in X and Y, and also on diameter. So they're really quite tight tolerances. There's also a couple of H7 fits. He just showed me, showed me one of the drawings. Um, and this is what the Rotors machine is so good at. It's about the precision, uh, the accuracy, not to mention the fact we're in a temperature controlled room. There's some AC units up there. I don't know if you can see those up there, Chris, that keep the machine shop here at 20 degrees C at all times. That's why I'm here in a t-shirt and I'm feeling nice and comfortable. Um, the next thing I find absolutely fascinating is the little inserts that the, uh, the operator's machine here how are you doing, sir? So we're going to have a quick look. This is actually for the inhaler. So you see, this is the, the, the positive mold, the, or the negative mold that makes the positive for the inhaler. All those little slots, all those webs. Uh, and this is actually manufactured in one hit 
on the five axis machine here from Rudders. So this is a high precision five axis machine. It's HSK E40 taper. And because it's E40, it's a high speed HSK, that means it can get up to 42,000 RPM. And that means you can do these kinds of parts which require some real micro machining. So we're talking small end mills. I mean, the smallest end mill is 0.4 millimeters they use on this job. They can go down to 0.1 on the end mills and the drills, which is, for me, is absolutely mind blowing. Before they were making uh, this on three axis machine tool, it was taking 40 hours, including some EDM steps as well. As soon as they took, took on the Rotor's five axis machine tool, they can make this in eight hours flat in one setup. So you set it up once, leaving going for eight hours. And they've also got automation on two of the machine tools here, um, a pallet system that means they can load up either their electrodes. You see the electrodes down there, which get machined and then get die sunk into the molds, or set up the inserts themselves to be machined on the pallets and they can run them overnight. And that's what generally the operators will be doing here all day is setting up the parts, making sure the processes are right and leave them going overnight to make beautiful parts like this ready for tomorrow morning. And if you just have a quick look a bit more of the detail of this, the surface finish is incredible. And what I love here is this is called a stop face. This is actually not part of the component itself. This is actually what, what needs to be sealed against uh, the, the, the shell that goes over the top of this. And because that plastic is a 1200 bar, you need not only a good surface finish to make a gas tight seal that can hold 1200 bar, you need a surface finish that, you need a tolerant, surface tolerance that means those surfaces meet really, really nicely. If you imagine your watch can maybe do 10 atmospheres, that's probably, I don't know, that's maybe about 10 bar, maybe 20 bar. This is 1200 bar, These material, this material needs to withstand. So you can't just stick an O-ring seal on it. You need real accuracy, real surface finish, and that's what they get from uh, roughing on the Doosan and also finishing on the beautiful Rotors machines here they have at Galway Tool and Mold. Uh, that's been Swarf and Chips. Thank you so much for watching.